This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer from St. Peter's Church, Ipsley, on this Thursday, the 29th of September. My name's Lindsay Nicholas, and I'm really pleased to be with you this morning and sharing worship with you this morning. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you, be praise and glory forever, as your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made, as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is Psalm 150, the very last psalm. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud crashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That lovely psalm of praise, it's not just, just wonderful, praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Today, in the Church of England calendar, we remember St Michael and all angels, because today, the 29th of September, is Michaelmas. I remember as children, when we did our Harvest Festival boxes, we always picked Michaelmas daisies from the garden to decorate our boxes with, remembering St Michael. St Michael is an angel and the leader of all angels and of the army of God. He is an archangel. St. Michael has four main responsibilities or offices, as we know from scripture and Christian tradition. The first is to combat Satan. The second is to escort the faithful to heaven at their hour of death. The third is to be a champion of all Christians and the church itself. And the fourth is to call men from life on earth to their heavenly judgment. Very little 
is known about St. Michael other than what we know from scriptures, which themselves are quite sparse. In Daniel, St. Michael is mentioned twice, the first time as one who helped Daniel, and the second time is mentioned with regard to the end times of the world, when he will stand for the children of thy people. His next mention comes in the epistle of St. Jude, where St. Michael is said to guard the tomb of Moses and Eve and has contended with Satan over the body of Moses. The final mention is in Revelation, where St. Michael and his angels do battle with the dragon. And we're going to now read that account. Revelation 12, 7 to 12. Revelation 12, 7 to 12. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back. But they were defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to earth and his angels were thro thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, St. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought and this is a dramatic scene between the good angels and the bad angels faithful angels and fallen angels and in this account the dragon represents satan in verse nine why is the battle fought well, in a previous scene of conflict between Michael and Satan, and you can read that in Jude's epistle, verse 9, Satan wanted to prevent God's plans for Moses because he knew God had plans for the resurrected Moses. And we can read that account in Luke 9, 30 to 31, in the account of the transfiguration with Moses appears in that reading. The story in Revelation is another, oca another occasion where Satan wants to get in the way of God's plans. And Daniel described this battle in Daniel 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was seen since was a nation ever to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. The battle in Revelation is a real fight. But is it a material or a spiritual battle? I mean, our battles with Satan and his demons is spiritual, fought on the battleground of truth. And deception 
of fear and faith, as it says in Ephesians 6. In regard to material attacks against the believer, Satan and his demons were disarmed at the cross, Colossians 2. Among angels, it is possible that, that it was a materialistic battle to be fought in a way we can only imagine, but of course we don't really know. In his classic works, Paradise Lost, the poet Milton actually tried to imagine this battle. But of course, the devil was thrown out of heaven. There was not a place for him or his angels in heaven any longer. And this shows us up until this happens that Satan did have access to heaven where he accuses God's people before the throne. And you can read accounts of that in Job. Satan and his angels were eventually thrown out of heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. This described Satan as vicious, an accuser, an adversary and a deceiver. And, you know, reading this, it troubles us to think that Satan had access to heaven. But the Bible clearly says that while Satan appears on earth and describes him as the prince of power of the air, it also says that Satan has access to heaven where he accuses God's people before the throne. You can read that in Luke, Ephesians and Job. But Satan has now gone from having access to heaven to restrictions to the earth. And verse 12 describes a joyful declaration in heaven, but also tells us that the devil has come to earth where we now have to be on our God. Our collect today asks God for the protection of his angels. And I will read you the collect for today. Michaelmas. Asking God for the protection of his angels. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the ministries of angels and mortals in a wonderful order. Grant that as your holy angels also always serve you in heaven, so at your command they may help and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And talking about St Michael, I always also remember as a child, we had a small hospital in our town and there was um, a statue of St Michael with the slain dragon um, standing guard outside of the hospital. Um, it, I believe he's still there. We pray for the worldwide church for unity and peace. Father, we know that you want us to grow. You want us to be better, stronger and wiser each day. But we also know that growth can be harmful when it is against your will. We pray for your church, its development and immeasurable greatness in your name. We know that everything is possible for you. Guide us to your will and give us the honour of being a part of the spread of your kingdom here in the world. And we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
you have chosen men and women to lead the whole church body. And we pray for them today. And we know that teaching the church is not simple or easy. We pray that you give spiritual wisdom to those you have chosen to lead us. May they always walk in the gospel and your truth. May they serve you with all faithfulness and wisdom. In the diocesan diary today, we are asked to pray for the children's and youth officers. And we pray for all the children and young people in our churches throughout the diocese. We pray for those who are part of the children's and youth councils and the children's officer, Emma Pettifer, and the youth officer, Simon Hill. We pray for them all, Lord, as they work through changes to how children and young people's ministry is supported going forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the world. Father God, we pray for our world today. We pray for peace and hope to abound. Many have been troubled by natural disasters, conflict, and the results of a global pandemic. In these challenging times, Help us turn to you as our source of strength and hope. Merciful Lord, we offer a prayer for your peace to be with all those who have suffered and continue to do so. Father God, we bring before you all who have fled persecution and conflict, searching for safety in different countries. May they find loving communities, be able to settle well and find healing for their experiences. May they find your peace, Lord. May those they meet be kind and compassionate to them. May they be welcoming and understanding. We lift them up to you, Father God, and ask for your protection over them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we turn to our Lord Jesus, who is a divine physician and healer of the sick. We turn to him in times of illness of mind, body and spirit. We are pulled to you all those people for whom we pray, those mentioned in the weekly catch, those known to us, those who have particularly asked us to pray for them, and those with no one to pray for them. Oh, dearest comforter of the troubled, alleviate the worries and pain for those who are ill by your gentle love and grant them the grace and strength to overcome these burdens. We place all worries in your hands, asking that it will, if it be your will, that you restore your servants to health again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who mourn a loved one. Lord, whether it be recently or a long time ago, we pray for those who still miss a loved one. And we ask that you come alongside them, Lord, and offer them your comfort 
and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with me this morning, and I hope that you may be able to join with me tomorrow when the readings will be Psalm 31 and Deuteronomy 7, 7 to 16. Psalm 31 and Deuteronomy 7, 7 to 16. And I look forward to catching up with you tomorrow. Bye for now.